Artboards in Illustrator control how you print and how you crop and how you save your artwork. It actually defines the file size. And you can have multiple artboards in Illustrator to have multiple page documents or different iterations of your files. So we're going to explore how to set up those artboards, how to navigate, and how to change some of the options in them. Here we go. So here's a document that actually has multiple artboards. And to see that, we're going to change our panel to the artboard panel. And we can see different artboards in here that are available. And they're in a certain order. And down the status bar, I can actually change the status bar to show me different artboards. I can navigate to the next one. It takes me to the front cover, to the, the badge for the ISBN, and maybe some information about the publishing details. I can also click on this drop down and actually just jump right in to a different artboard. The status bar actually can tell you um, some information about the artboard itself. Right now, it's showing me, let's click on here, show. It's showing me the current tool that's active. But I could switch this to show me the artboard name. And then as I'm moving through, <laughs> as I'm moving through these different artboards, I can see the name of the artboard. And it's very easy to change these artboards and even the order of them. So for example, where it says full cover, maybe I don't really need the whole front and back. I just want full cover and spine. I can click on that and it changes the name. I can also change the order, just drag and drop those layers. So now the front cover is artboard number one and here's full cover and spine. It gives me some options in there. The spine may be referring to a specific size that's actually determined perhaps by the number of pages in your final book. And if you click on this icon right here, you can see some more choices for actually changing um, some elements of that particular artboard. And so I can see the width. So I have perhaps a uh, tabloid size paper with a little extra spacing for the spine. I could even change that information. So if I switch this up to let's say 0.5, perhaps there was new pages that are added, we need a wider spine. And then when I click on OK, it updates it. And you can see a thin edge right here. I'm still gonna have to reset the artwork to map to these new um, parameters and maybe readjust the spine. But now I have some extra space to do that. I'm gonna go over to another document over here Actually, let's do this one first. This one actually has multiple artboards and it's a great way of doing something like a logo where you have one of different versions. Let's go and show all the artboards. So if we fit all in window, Alt Control Zero, we can see all the different artboards, all the artwork. And we've got different versions of a similar logo, which is great if I wanted to create, let's say, a reverse copy or um, in this case, we have different versions of coloring. Now, one of the things that I could do is I could quickly click on New Artboard. It's going to automatically create a new artboard with the same dimensions as whatever happened to be selected. It gives it a name in here, and actually it's putting it in an order, and I could rearrange that order and rename it to Artboard 4. The other option I could do is I could take an existing artboard, here's one right here, and I could pull it on top of this button, and instead of creating a new blank artboard, I get a duplicate version. And you can see it just adds it here by default to the right. And then I could rename it to what I wanted, Artboard 5. I could also take this one, this plain one, realize, no, nah, I don't think I want that. I want to use a duplicate. I could pull that into the trash. I just deleted the, art, the artboard. And if there had been any artwork on it, it would have, well, let's just try it. Let's see what happens. If I delete this Artboard 5, scroll over a little bit, if I delete this five and we go out down there, you can see that the artwork is still available. It's just no longer living on an artboard. Let's go ahead and undo. And the artboard is back. And I could rename it Artboard 4. I may want to move this, though. I may want to move it around because it's, now I've got this gap in here. And so one option is to click on the icon here and I can move it with my X and Y coordinates. But another tool that's very handy is to use the artboard tool over here on the side. And that looks very similar to the symbol right here. The artboard tool allows you to take an existing artboard and move the whole thing. So you're not necessarily moving um, individual objects. You're moving the artboard and all the objects on top of it move with it. You can see how the smart, board, smart guides, those green lines, are helping me line everything up. 
so it makes it easy to space and line things up for me. Also in the control panel, I have different settings in here that allow me to take advantage of the artboard. For example, the name of it and the width and height and X and Y. And then I can switch back to my selection tool and now work on the individual objects if I want to make another version or another copy of this. I come back here to my cover and spine. And another thing that you can do with artboards is you can have artboards that overlap or that are on top of each other. For example, here's an artboard for the ISBN badge and here's one for the imprint. And they're giving me some information about um, these specific elements, but they're actually on top of or in part of this whole thing called full cover and spine. And so if I tried to move these objects, I could actually potentially be moving some other elements. So if I click on this, that one actually did okay. Sometimes when you move objects, it'll move elements on the back of it as well. But you might want to create an artboard like here that is on top of another one. So if I try to create this artboard, you can see what's happening is I'm trying to create it, but just by dragging it, I actually am moving another artboard. So the trick here is to hold down your shift key. When you hold down the shift key, and now I can let go of the shift key, but you start with the shift key, that allows you to create an artboard that's on top of another one. So again, I'm holding on the shift key to start dragging, and I'm going to let go of the shift key so I can create dragging. If I kept the shift key turned on, it constrains the shape, which makes it a little different. But there you go. So now I can create this artboard. Maybe I want to create something of the artwork itself. And now I've got those elements in place. And I could give it a name and whatever I wanted to do. Now, artboards can be really handy as a way of creating something like a cover and spine or doing logos or for an example where you're going to do different versions of a document but one might be a, a trifold or a brochure and the other might be a postcard size and then you can copy some of those assets to create different options but for different sizes and these all get affected when you end up saving the document so if I were to do save as I could save this as a PDF file for example, and give it a moment. And I'm going to use my Illustrator defaults, save PDF. And as I'm saving this here, you'll notice that it's actually saving the different artboards. And it gives it a moment and it's going to create the PDF file for me. I'm actually going to change something here. I'm going to move to my logos. And I'm going to show you this. This one is, is already it's still an AI file. So when I go to save as and I change this to a PDF. There we go. Save it. Oops. Did that so fast I forgot to show you my step in here. Let me try that more time. When I save it as a, as a PDF file in here, you can see that it's using artboards by default. And there it's all. And what's going to happen is actually going to create a PDF with multiple pages one for each artboard. And technically, you could change the range and just have one item. Now, the other option, instead of a PDF, you may have lots of different things that you're saving or exporting it to. But if you're going to save this to an EPS file, you have the choice of using artboards or not. And I'll go ahead and choose yes. But let me go ahead and create a new folder, just because this can be kind of big. So here's my new folder. Go ahead and save that with the EPS file. And I'll use my default settings in here. Click on OK. And you can see how it's creating those files. Let's go over and open up this information. Here's the new folder. And what we actually have is a logo, one for each of the artboards that we created. Pretty slick. And if I go back in here and I open up, I can see the PDF file. Here's that PDF file. And we'll open it up. And it actually opens it up with the different pages. And there's six pages total, one for each of those artboards. Let's close that out. So what you have are these great artboards 
that allow you to work with different sizes, different versions of your document, different layouts of your document, all within one file for printing and saving and even cropping purposes.